So how's the holiday, Mum? You enjoying yourself? Oh, very much, Thomas. What's the weather like? Well, it was a bit drizzly today, but generally not too bad, dear. And when are you coming home? Oh, I'm not coming home. What? I can't come home, dear. I'm too old. I don't know what you mean. You do know what I mean, dear. You've always known. What's happening? Mum? Holden! Holden! Mum? Oh! Holden! Holden! Mum? Are you there? <sighs> Tell me. <sighs> Another nightmare. The Sensitive, The Protector, by Alistair Jessamine. Thank you. You would have been in the garden today, pottering around. Nice day like this. His jacket, his shoes and his watch. The watch I gave him 40 years ago. That's all they found. No note or anything. And was he depressed, Jean? Aye, but no more so than usual. I know how it must look, Thomas, but I just don't believe he killed himself. Could he have had an accident? He might have slipped and fallen. He was a good age. Oh, he was fit as a fiddle for his age. I don't know. But you must understand, son. He was always the kind older brother. Even before our parents died. He wasn't the sort of man to abandon me. That's why I need to know what really happened. You will help me. I'll do what I can, Jean. Thanks, dear. I really appreciate it. And how's your mum? Oh, she had a bit of a bad night last night, I'm afraid. Oh, dear. I do so want to come and visit. I will if I can. But the bottom of the garden's about my limit at the moment. She understands, Jean. She's been such a good friend to me and George over the years. I don't know how you do these things, son. Would it be helpful for you to see the spot where they found these things? It's not far, just round the headland. It might help, aye. What I'd really find useful is to have some object he treasured. You mentioned a watch? Aye, I brought it out in my bag. I carry it with me now. He certainly loved his watch. Oh yeah, here we are. If you just place it on my palm, Jean. Oh, that's great, Richie. Yeah. Yes. Right, bye now. Oh, yes. Richie's on board, Tommy. Daniel Editor. Me, Arts Editor. Jenny Cullen. Bob Dryden. Richie! Right. <laughs> Isn't it? <gasps> mm. This newspaper's going to have real style. I mean, what's the point of doing it with... Oh, sorry, I'm, I'm overexcited. That's OK. I'm glad Richie's joining you. I thought your mum didn't look so bad today. Mm, I thought she was looking awful gaunt. I mean, she hates the hospital food. Oh, hey, you better watch your time if you want to get that ferry. Time for another drink. So, this woman you were seeing this afternoon. Jean. How did your mum know her? Oh, they've been friends since they were... Kids during the war in Clyde Bank. Jean and George's parents were killed in the air raids, actually. The Blitz. God. It was devastating, Clyde Bank, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. It's worse than Coventry, even. My mum's never really talked about it. 
Anyway, they kept in touch. Me and Mum and Dad used to have holidays with them both. Just up the coast there. And what was he like? The husband? Oh, he was her brother, not her husband. George. What a lovely guy. I really liked him. You think he killed himself? Oh, probably. There's no other explanation, really. And he was depressed. But... What? Oh, I don't know. Something doesn't feel right. Oh, I shouldn't have agreed to help. You know, what with Mum? I can't finish this. Are you not hungry? I'm not dealing with it very well, am I, Kat? Dealing with what? I'm just so scared of losing her. You rehearse it in your mind, but... I think she'll pull through, Tommy. She's as tough as old Butch, you and Mum. Such a terrible shame, Thomas. Aye. Oh, so unlike him to do something like that. They doted on one another. Oh, poor Jean. Thomas, could you arrange these pillows a bit better? Hmm. Sit up a wee fraction, then. Oh, it's so upsetting. Oh, George. How's that? Oh, that's better, dear. <laughs> we used to go out together in the Clydebank days, me and George. Really? I didn't know that. My. But well, you were just a wee girl when you lived in Clydebank. George would have been a lot older. Ah, you're, you're right. It would have been later then that we went out together, after Clydebank. Oh, the old memory of mine. So what year would that have been? Oh, some time before I met your dad. I, I, I can't really remember now. Thomas, c could you bring my nice writing paper next time? Sure. Oh, uh, Kat's going to come over on Monday for about a week. Oh, she shouldn't come over on my account. Tell her not to. No, if it's a nice day on Thursday and you're well enough, we can maybe see if they'd let you out for a couple of hours for your birthday. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Uh, what age will you be, if I may be so bold? Twenty-one. <laughs> Badminton jackets. Corsets. Hey, look, Tommy. Corsets. An action man. Cat, you're not going to find them in the lost property cupboard. Oh, why do I feel so hellish? Because you demolished my mother's entire stock of malts last night. What are we looking for again? Notelets. Mm. Rennie Macintosh design notelets. And it's absolutely vital that we find them. Well, she's very particular about a writing paper. OK, OK. Oh, God. Death by Glen Morangy. That's the photo drawer. They're not going to be in the photo drawer either. Is this them? Well, what the hell was a writing paper doing in the photo drawer? I don't know, do I? I don't think I've seen any old photos of you. We didn't go in for photos much. That's about all we have. Oh, mm. cat. This one, look. Me, Mum, Dad... Jean and George. And that's Freda. She was a lovely dog. Your mum and dad must have had you when they were pretty old. Aye. That was quite a surprise, seemingly. Oh, you were a handsome lad, Tommy. <laughs> Do you have any really early memories? Like before you were two? Oh, I don't think I can remember that far back. Hmm. I have memories from when I'm about three or four, though you're never quite sure whether it's a memory or a photograph. <laughs> Certainly remember this sledge. Oh, sweet. <laughs> you look as if you're wearing a huge tea cosy. There's no photos of me as a baby before I'm two. None at all. And no memories either. I mean, these nightmares I've been having... There's some vague memory associated with them, you know? 
I'm young, really young, maybe just a baby. A dark room. I'm crying. I'm screaming. I think I've been left alone or something. And all these papers, Jean? He was in the middle of writing a book on myth. Norse myth. He was writing it with a friend of his, eh, David Brewster. They'd walk along the beach for hours, planning it all out. Thor, Odin, Balder. What's that, son? Ah, the Norse gods. He used to tell me stories about the Norse gods when I was a boy. Oh, aye. And do you remember her? Oh, yes, I remember Frida. He had that picture over his desk for years. George loved that dog. Didn't want to replace her when she died. Look, I know it's a daft thing to ask, but... Did George have any enemies? Anyone who might have wanted to harm him? I've wondered. But no, it's just ridiculous. He was so well loved. You know, he'd been retired for over 25 years. But he'd still get his old pupils coming to visit. <laughs> I miss him terribly, Thomas. Of course you do. Wherever we ended up, he always looked after me. That was the way it was all my life. And that's why, Thomas, I must keep trusting him. Why I can't believe that he just left me. People do irrational things, Jean. Perhaps it just suddenly got too much for him, the depression. But he knew I would have helped him through it all. We helped each other. He knew these states didn't last forever. Am I just being silly? Am I wasting your time, son? I, I don't know, Jean. But what else could have happened? He was sat at the piano there. He played an old Celtic song. A lullaby I really loved. Then when he finished it, he stood up, smiled at me, put on his jacket. Off to stretch my legs, Jean, he said. It was a Thursday night. We were at a concert at the co-op hall. A family night out. Me, Mum, Dad, Jean and George. In the middle of one of the turns, the sirens went. Well, there'd been so many false alarms. They decided just to keep going. But then the bombs started dropping and the windows blew in. You must have been absolutely terrified. Did you spend the night in the shelters? We spent the night in the basement. When we came out the next morning, oh, I still have nightmares about it. People trying to shift these huge lumps of sandstone with their bare hands, trying to get to the folk underneath. Oh, I remember there were... Four or five children lying in the middle of the street like broken dolls, arranged neatly side by side. Jean and Mum and I went into the church, and George and Dad went back over to Holy City to see if Mr and Mrs Harvey were OK. Holy City? Holy City was the area where we lived. Radnor Park, Holy City. Utterly destroyed. Our house was gone. The whole tenement. And Jean and George's parents. They'd all been hiding out in the close, you see in the downstairs lobby, but 
Oh, I don't know why I'm suddenly going on about all this. It's been such a lovely day. It's the first time I've heard you talk about it. Maybe it's because I've been thinking about George. We used to have picnics here, Kat. Did you? Favourite spot. <laughs> Thomas, do you remember the time we left you sleeping here? Oh. Me and Dad. What was that? Well, Thomas was fast asleep. And me and his dad just went down to the river bank down there for five minutes. And Thomas woke up and thought we'd abandoned him. You bowled the place down. What age would I have been then? Twenty-one. I'm oh, yeah. <laughs> with you. You didn't like to be left, did you? He always had to sleep with the light on. Um. Thomas. Mm-hmm. Oh, nothing. What? I just think we should go soon, dear. I'm a wee bit tired. OK. I can see why this is your favourite spot. Hi. There was a song, Mum. That song you used to sing me when I had nightmares. Do you remember? Dream Angus. Dream Angus. Do you remember it? Aye. How did it go? Dreams to sell, fine dreams to sell. Angus is here, we dreams to sell. Hush, ye my bairnie, sleep without fear. Dream Angus has brought you a dream, my dear. That was it. Oh, oh, <laughs> excuse me, dead beat. Shall we go, Tommy? Mm. A minute. Just fixing it all in my mind, Kat. The river. Mum. You. What age will you be, if I may be so bold? Twenty-one. Mum! Mum! Where are you? Cat! Cat, are you there? Cat! Cat, where are you? Tommy, what's wrong? I thought you'd gone. Oh, I thought you'd all left me. You weren't here. It's all right. You're all right. You just had a nightmare, Tommy. You're okay. I feel as if it's all going to overwhelm me. What's going to overwhelm you? The information, the the voices, the stuff in my head, it's all rushing in. Hey, you're okay. I just accept it. That's who I am, you know, but... At times like these, when it gets really bad, I realise I'm just... mad. Cat, it's madness. Shh, shh, come on. Hey, come here. So it's going to happen, this newspaper. Looks like it. Oh, that's good, dear. You'll be very busy. Aye. You won't be able to see so much of Thomas... Well, we'll see. You think the two of you might get married? Uh, I don't know, Linda. But you're very fond of him. Of course. He needs somebody. Somebody to look after him. 
Oh, don't worry about Tommy. I do, I do worry, dear. I worry about what's going to happen to him after I'm gone. You're not going anywhere, Linda. You're going to be fine. You'll outlive the pair of us. We were having a look at some of your old photos yesterday morning. Photos? Where? Which ones? They were with your writing stuff. A few of Tommy as a boy. One of Tommy and you and Mr Souter. With Jean and George. I need to take this cover off. Are you too hot, Linda? I feel a wee bit feverish. Do you want me to get the nurse? No, no, I'm all right. If you could just... Is that better? Aye. Thank you. He has no confidence in himself, Cat. Time and again I've had to tell him, you must trust these things. What things? His gifts. I tell him that they're gifts from God, Thomas. You need to trust them. Trust yourself. You must make him understand, Cat. They're gifts from God. Linda, I don't quite understand his gifts. And, well, I don't really believe in God. No. But you will. You will take care of him after I'm gone. Cat. Oh, you mustn't talk like this. But the fact is, dear... You're going to be fine. And he's stronger than you think, Linda. He really is. I know you think I mollycoddle him. But I know, Thomas, he can't cope on his own. <laughs> Are you OK? <laughs> I have done my best for him. Of course you have. But there were things I should have said. And it's too late now. Oh, it's all got too big. But it was for his sake I didn't tell him. It was. I didn't mean to. What didn't you tell him, Linda? Oh, God. Oh. It's all right. There's a box, dear. In the attic. I want you to do me a favour. A blue box... Metal in the bottom drawer of the old desk. I want you to burn the contents. I don't want Thomas to find it. Would you do that for me, Cat? Please. Jean, I'm not sure I can help anymore. I'm really kind of busy with Mum and everything. I'm sorry. Aye. So you've no sense of what might have happened to him, Thomas. No clues as to why or how Not or... really. That's confused, Gina. It's all getting mixed up with my own stuff at the moment. I'm just too preoccupied. Maybe I just have to face facts. Maybe there is no other explanation, eh? I'd like to have been more help. Oh, no, but... no. Mum's your priority. I would like to try and go over to see her next week if I possibly can. Jean, is there anything she might be hiding from me? How do you mean, dear? Well, I just get this sense that, well, just that, she's keeping something from me. Something important. If there is something, then she must have her reasons. But there is. Something, isn't there? She loves you very much, Thomas. She'd do anything for you. Your mother would never hide anything from you without a good reason. You must trust that. Is there anything you'd like to tell me, Mum? What do you mean? Oh, I don't know. 
Anything on your mind? I don't know what you mean, dear. Did you sort the car insurance? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's done, all sorted. Good boy. You remember the Queen's Hotel in Berwick? What was that, dear? You remember the Queen's Hotel, the holidays we had in Berwick? Oh, yes. <laughs> Those were my favourite holidays, I think. I liked going to Jean and George's, but Berwick was my favourite. Was it? Hmm. Dad picked good places, didn't he? Thomas. Could you get a new hanky from the cupboard? What, uh, this week cupboard? Aye. We had a sing-song one night, remember? The last year we were there. Dad embarrassed you by singing, uh, oh, what was it? Some Frank Sinatra thing. Oh, and there was that crazy golf course. Used to drive him wild. I can't see any hankies, Mum. <laughs> I remember him once getting so frustrated at one of the holes, he bashed the ball right onto the beach. Oh! Ah! Here we are. Mum? Mum? Mum! Do you have her address book, Tommy? You need to go through the address book with me. We need to make these phone calls, Tommy. I can't come home, dear. It's my age. What are you talking about? I'm too old. I, I, I don't know what you mean. You do know what I mean. You've always known. I need to go to work now, darling. Tommy. Don't lie in too late, eh, Tommy? Tommy, are you listening to me? You'll feel better if you get up and do things. We remember to Linda's great hospitality. Whoever turned up at the Sycamores, whether unannounced or no, <coughs> would be sure of a very warm welcome. And a very ample spread. <laughs> what age will you be, if I may be so bold? Twenty-one. We have entrusted our sister, Linda Souter, into the hands of God. And we now... Parshi my bene, sleep without fear. Dream angus has brought you a dream, my dear. How are you doing? Oh, okay, I suppose. I keep forgetting people's names. It's embarrassing. You want another drink? Mm. I'm okay. Oh, I wish Mr Anderson hadn't been away. That assistant hardly knew her. He did his best. Aye, well... I should have said something. Say something now. Oh, I don't know if I can hold it together, Kat. I'll clink the glass. Go on, Tommy. OK. <clears throat> uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you all for coming today. I'd just like to say a few quick words... It's, uh, it's lovely to see so many of you, so many of Linda's friends. She'd have been very touched. Uh, there's so much I could say about Mum. Uh, perhaps the one thing, well, the, the thing I, I really want to say is how much we all benefited from our kindness. Uh, I think it's the thing we'll all remember most about her. The way she took care of you, or protected you, the way you felt safe with her, 
you know, all the little things Linda did for us all. The presents, the phone calls, all the wee details. The way the guest rooms always smelt so good. <laughs> I don't know how she did that. Yeah. Just all the things, all the trouble she took. And, you know, the way she never spoke badly of anybody. Yeah, that's true. Her kindness. Yeah. yeah. So, please, uh, toast to Linda. Yes, Linda. 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 Jean, you all right? Aye. Thanks for what you said, Thomas. <laughs> We'll uh, take you back home soon, eh? It's so good of you both. I just wish I'd made it to see her. Still. And how are you, dear? Oh, well. Jean, listen. Please, tell me. Tell you what, dear? Yes, it's son. I love what you said, Thomas. Thank you. Uh, thanks. She wasn't my mother, was she? She was my grandmother. Susan. Your birth mother's name was Susan. Here you are, dear. Thanks, Jean. She was always a troubled lassie. And when she was... Oh, 14 or so... She really took against London, your dad, for some reason. It was a terrible time for them all. She left home straight after school and became pregnant with you a few years later. And this troubled lassie was mum's daughter, was my real mum. Aye. Susan. Susan Sutter. How did Linda manage to keep it from me, Jean? For so long. And my father? My real father? Susan... Uh, rather spread it around, I believe. I I'm not sure she knew who the father was. She was incapable of looking after you, Thomas. Seemingly she used to leave you in the house alone for hours at a time. Whole days occasionally. Days? So, when you were about two, Linda and Campbell stepped in. They got a court order in the end. Legally adopted you. Susan went to London, I think. They never saw her again, as far as I know. So, you don't know if she's still alive? No. I don't think Linda knew either, but she never talked about Susan, ever. There were so many things that didn't make sense. And Mum always used to say how she had me late in life, but even so, she was much older than she said she was. She was more George's age, wasn't she? Aye. She and George were sweethearts in the Clyde Bank days, you know. Aye. She let that slip. When I came home from the hospital, the day she died, it was so strange. The words were suddenly there in my head. It was as if I finally had permission to say, you were my grandmother. Oh, it must have been torture for her to keep up the pretense. I mean, it wasn't in her nature to lie, was it? No, that's true. But you were her child, Thomas. To all intents and purposes, she was your mother. I still don't understand why she couldn't have told me. Maybe she just wanted you to feel safe, son. When you live through what we lived through, you want to shield your people from everything horrible. And perhaps she felt if she told you the truth, things might have changed between you. And you might have gone looking for Susan. What does she look like? Dark. Very dark hair. 
quite a beautiful lassie. Would you rather be on your own? No. Oh, why didn't I realise until now? Well, maybe you didn't want to. Don't leak this to your paper, will you? What do you mean? Celebrated psychic detective Thomas Souter was surprised to learn his mother was, in fact, his grandmother. <laughs> Here. This is the spot where they found George's things. This is where he went in. But Jean trusted him. Absolutely. That's why she got in touch with me. She refused to believe he could have just abandoned her like that. Without even a note. You think you know somebody, but... I'm sure she did it for the best, Tommy, your mum. She wasn't my mum. Tommy... It was in her mind. She talked to something big, something she couldn't say because it had grown so big. It doesn't make any difference. She was your mother. You know, she asked me to do something the last time I saw her. She asked me to find a box that was in the attic and destroy the contents. She didn't want you to find it. I couldn't say no to her. And you found it? Yes. I burned what was in it. Papers, photos. What were they? I didn't look. I'm sorry, I couldn't refuse her. What do you think they were? Oh, pictures of my mother, maybe. Who knows, Kat? Morning! Sir! Don't worry! They're very friendly! Oh, Odin! Down! Oh, hello. Hello, dear. Uh, I'm afraid he's marked your dress. Oh, don't worry. <laughs> Lovely day, eh? Lovely. You on holiday? We were just visiting Jean. Jean Harvey? Oh, I, I, I know Jean very well. I was a great friend of George's. Hi. We were working on a book together. Thor and Odin. Sorry? Thor and Odin. Ah, that's right. Oh, you're beautiful, aren't you? Aren't you? <laughs> Jean said your book was about Norse myth. Aye. I won't see the light of day now, I'm afraid. <laughs> Haven't the heart? Oh, I'd... get down, you daft lump. It's all right. I remember Freda, George's dog. Aye, Freda. Same lot there is these two. Mythology was our passion, me and George. They all got Norse names. Well... It was better than calling you after footballer, wasn't it, eh? <laughs> Did you have another dog? Aye. Was his name Balder? Aye. How do you know that? Oh, I, I don't know. George might have mentioned. Oh, why old Balder? <laughs> aye, you miss your daft brother, don't you, eh? <laughs> he used to wander off for days. About a month ago, he wandered off. But he never came back this time. You remember what day it was when he disappeared? Oh, I remember it well. It was the same day we got the news about George. I was half expecting him to drop in that night. But, well, why'd you want to know? Over. Over. Tommy? What is it? Did he like the water, Balder? Oh, why? He loved the water. Very strong currents here. I remember that from when I was a kid. It would make sense, absolute sense, how like him, Thomas, to go in after the dog at his age too. But he couldn't let Balder drown, could he? Thank you, son. No proof, but... It's what happened. I know it is. And the watch, Jean. I think he left the watch there for you. In case he didn't make it back. Tommy. Oh. Tommy. Oh. 
Follow me. Thomas. Thomas. Mum. What are you doing here? I can't stay long, dear. I just stopped by. There was something I wanted to show you. Look. The other side of the river there. Oh, it's beautiful. Clyde Bank. Holy city. The council have put a lot of money into it. Golden domes. And there. See? A huge, big library. Aye. Aye. I thought you'd like that. And the park. Look what they've done to the park, Mum. Flowers and fountains and animals. Animals for the kids. Oh. Have you come back to live here? Is this your home? Oh, no, dear. It's your home. My home? Aye. Look. On the bank there. <laughs> Cat sunbathing. <laughs> and see the people, Thomas. In the windows. On the streets. The little matchstick people. You're their protector, dear. What do you mean? I must go now. Oh, stay, please. Goodbye, Thomas. Don't go yet. What do you mean, their protector? I must go. But I've got so much I want to say to you. Ask you. Goodbye, dear. Take care of yourself. Goodbye, Mum. <sighs> Tell me, are you okay? Tell me. Oh, I just had a beautiful dream, Kat. In The Sensitive, The Protector by Alistair Jessamine, Thomas was played by Robin Lang, Mrs. Souter by Sheila Donald, Cat Julie Duncanson, Jean Harvey, Anne Downey, and The Minister and David by John Buick. The play was directed by Bruce Young. <laughs>